Hey guys, here's Brenda from my Wee Wee Brunch Cradle. I'm here today with Zena and Jenalind. <laughs> so Zena is here, this is Zena, and that is Jenalind. And Jenalind is actually Suzanne's Matilda Jane from a while ago. So I am so honored to have Jenalind. I named her after Jenny because that's who I got the doll from. And Jenlyn, she is just part of the family and I love her so much. So I love Zena too. As you can tell, Zena's personality, she still needs her milk and she still needs her passy. But Jenlyn here, she is just so content and more grown up even though she's smaller. But Jenlyn... She is a sweetheart. They both are a sweetheart. Now, today, I would really love to participate in Suzanne's tag, What Bugs You in Movies. Um, let me just double check or annoys you. Let's see. The tag is called What Bugs You in Films, and she also mentioned in her video that you could talk about TV shows too. Um, so sorry if you hear the heater come on in the background. It's very cold where I live. I'll just show you an example. It's minus 28 Celsius and 21 in the house. If I change this to Fahrenheit, it's minus 18 Fahrenheit and 69 in the house. So, yes, we need a lot of heat where I live. And I could, let's see if I could show you what our streets look like. The sun is shining very brightly. Yeah, and there's a lot of reflection, but let's see if I can give you an idea. There's a vehicle driving by. See how high the snow was up to the vehicle? Yeah. So yes, I live in northern Canada. And yes, it is very cold. Very cold where I live. So, but... These two are just so sweet. I love them. I love them so much. Now, Zena is named after my favorite TV show, Zena, The Warrior Princess. I own the entire series. I own lots of TV shows of the entire series. But there is something that bothers me about Zena. And some of her moves are just not realistic. But most of them can be realistic, but not all of them. But then again, apparently she has some goddess powers within her, so who knows. <laughs> but anyways, and then Jenlyn is named after Jenny, and Jenny bought the doll from Suzanne. So anyways, I love her in my collection. She's staying forever. Same with Zena. Now, a few things that bothers me in films. The thing is, not a lot of things bother me. Um, I'm pretty laid back when it comes to films and TV shows. I'm pretty much up for anything. I watch a lot of genres. And um, there are a few things that bother me. I know that I've watched a few other tech videos. And everyone seems to mention like dark scenes. And so that doesn't really bother me because it's just part of the suspense and um, some films add that on purpose. Um, there was another, oh, I forget the name of the movie. I don't own it, but apparently it was like the camera work in it. It was like too shaky and that a lot of audience members had to leave because they felt sick. It starts with a C. I forget the name of it. I should look it up. Okay, the movie I was talking about is called Cloverfield. And I've only seen it once. And so I can't really remember it. But I do remember that the camera work in that movie is very shaky. And a lot of people didn't like it. 
But um, for me personally, I can't remember if I liked it or not. Maybe I didn't because I, if I don't remember the movie, then it probably didn't really matter to me. So, but yeah, when it's really shaky camera work, I guess I don't really like. Um, but I do have a couple of examples here because for the most part, I'm not bothered by a lot of TV or the computer generated uh scenes um some of them i've gotten used to them the first few years of of movies using uh computer generated uh, images cgi um i didn't really like i guess but i guess i got used to them like watching cartoons when i was a kid it was all drawn and colored in and then when my kids started watching cartoons it's like all computer generated objects and I guess they're totally used to that see for me that's not a cartoon <laughs> but to them it is so I don't know I feel like I'm rambling but I do have a couple examples of movies I wanted to show you number one thing that annoyed me in a movie that still does to this day i think it's like two things ever that really bu bug me about a film and one is a tv series i'll show you the film that i love don't judge me <laughs> i do love red sonia i've always loved well obviously i mean here's dina i love this age um, like Conan, Conan the Destroyer, Red Sonja, Xena, Hercules, uh, 300 men, or what's it called? Just 300, but movies in medieval times I've always enjoyed. And this movie is one of my favorites. I really enjoy this movie. I know the lines by heart. I watched it as a kid so many times, but there's one scene that really bugs me. Now, Red Sonia is played by Bridget Nielsen. And she did not act very well at all in this movie. She's not a good actress. And in fact, in the beginning, when I was a kid, I thought that her accent was fake. Because I thought she wanted to be like the female Arnold Schwarzenegger. And her accent is actually real. <laughs> but um, I thought her acting was horrible. But there's this one scene that she was in. And it was when her sister died. And she was crying. She died in her arms. It was really sad. And she's crying. She's crying for her sister. And then Arnold comes up. And asks, like, you know, kind of says, like hear it like you know just come to help her actually and her acting just totally like she was crying 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 and then all of a sudden she's like who are you anyway like not no not even sad when she said that not even sounding sad or anything so she was a really bad actress in this movie and especially for that scene because it was so sad and like you know the sad vibes and then all of a sudden it was like, who are you anyway? Like, all mad. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> you can't do that. So that was the biggest thing that bugs me in a movie. Oh, in the movie Sheena, which I wish I owned. The original Sheena, that is, from the 80s. Um, there's a few scenes in that movie that bug me. Like, for instance, she lifted. She was climbing a tree with this other guy. And the other guy can't climb trees very well. And Sheena, of course, she climbed up really fast. Sheena is like the queen of the jungle. And um, anyway, she pulled him up into the tree with her one leg. And she's super skinny. Yeah, right. <laughs> As if she had the muscle power to do that. But anyways, I don't own that movie. Um, another thing about films is when I read the book... And the movie does not 
follow the book at all. And this is a huge example of that. This is V.C. Andrews, Flowers in the Attic. I love this movie. I love the book. But the ending of this movie and the book are totally not the same at all. This one was made in, uh, I think, they, well, the 80s for sure. Just trying to see. I don't see a date anywhere. It should see the date, but I'm not really seeing it. Like, wonderful actress. Like, the actress, like, the... The lady that played the grandmother, oh, she did a wonderful job. She, like, it was a good movie. It's just, it did not follow the book at all. Now, these versions, these they remade the series, Flowers in the Attic. Also amazing. I like the acting in this. And these are the books that follow, Petals on the Wind, uh, If There Be Thorns and Seeds of Yesterday. This did follow the novel, and I do enjoy these series a lot. In fact, I prefer this version over this version. But when they remade it and actually um, followed the novel, I they made it better. They redeemed themselves. <laughs> but yeah, when there's a movie that does not follow the novel, I, that bothers me. Now, the other two things that bug me are based on TV shows. And this particular TV show is based in Canada. It's Degrassi Junior High. It's uh, from the 80s, if you can tell <laughs> by, by the styles. I love this show. The thing about this show was that it touched on a lot of teenage, um, like, Teen pregnancy, drugs and alcohol, sexual abuse, uh, AIDS, homosexuality. And in the 80s, it was a really controversial show. And many parents did not allow their kids to watch the show. I had friends that were not allowed to watch the show. And so funny, so kind of odd that they grew up. And <laughs> like one... The one friend that was not allowed to watch the show, she got pregnant at the age of 15. Uh, <laughs> um, my other friend who was not allowed to watch the show became an addict. <laughs> so I don't know. I think this actually teaches you morals and real life situations for kids. And I actually got my sons hooked on this show and they really enjoy it. I know that there is a Degrassi Next Generation, but I've never watched it. I still love this original version. Now, the thing that bugs me about this is that there are many shows that are, like, thought-provoking. Um, they're scary. They're tragic. Um, like, when people die... It's very sad, very shocking, like people dying because of drug overdose or car accidents because they're driving drunk, um, like just serious, serious topics. And at the end of the show, it gives you a very, like, I can't describe it. It's like very emotional. You feel like you want to cry, but you're shocked at the same time. And then all of a sudden, at the ending credits, it's this happy music because the music of Degrassi Junior High is happy. And it's like, and then so I remember watching with my sons. Like, just shocked at the end of the show. And then all of a sudden, -na 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 and we're, like, so confused with our emotions. It's just like, what? How can you play happy music after what just happened? <laughs> so that bugs me about that. Now, one more thing that bugs me is when there's a TV show, and it's an awesome TV show. 
but it only is on the air for one season. And why is that? Because they were in competition with another brand new TV show. And the other TV show won a place to, this is back in the, like, in the day. This TV show is called Invasion. And I own the complete series, which is only one season. Ugh. It's so good. This show is so, so, so good. Um, one of Primetime's best dramas, period, which it was. Um, amazing crew of actors. Amazing. They're all amazing actresses and actors. It's so good. It's invasion about uh, aliens, basically. But no one knew that it was aliens because no one believes in aliens. So they had to kind of prove it and discover it. And um, it's really, really awesome. But what bugs me is that the TV show that they were in competition with to have airtime on this particular station, they lost over the other show. So that bothered me. This show could have easily went into oh it go went. It got easily go into other seasons. It's so good. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're just all blurry and everything. But this was an amazing, amazing show. Oh, I loved it. Oh, so good. So good. Full of suspense and I really enjoyed it. Let's see. As a well-written, well-acted, and intensely focused a piece of television as you'll find anywhere on the tube. And not too many people know about it. Which is sad because it's so good. I love the series. So do you want to know what TV show they were in competition with? It was this. <laughs> Which I also own. I own all six seasons. I own the entire, the entire series. But this so happens to be the fifth. Because um, this is also another awesome, amazing show. But because they had the highest ratings, they took over the spot for Invasion. So it's too bad. They're both amazing shows. If you liked Lost, you would like Invasion. So anyways, I think that's all. I think those are the only examples I have. Um, I hope that you're having a great day. Thank you so much for watching. And Suzanne, this was such a fun tag. I really enjoyed it. I had to think about it, though, because um, there's not too many things that bother me <laughs> in films. I'm just pretty easygoing. But anyways, guys, hope that you're having a great day. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Bye, guys. Love you. Mad time, guys. Mad time. Love you, guys. Bye.